The northwest slopes of New South Wales have been farmed for 120 years. For most of this time, it was rich grazing country, but today big areas have been converted to cropping. In the Moree district, until recent years, huge flocks of sheep provided the basis for rural prosperity. But where hundreds of thousands of sheep once grazed along the Gwaida River, comparatively few can be found these days. The graziers have almost disappeared, their place taken by farmers of grain and the new boom crop, cotton. Irrigation pumps drawing water from the Copeton Dam on the Gwaida have dramatically changed the rural lifestyle of this region. But there's one property where the water is used for a farming project that for years was regarded around Moree as the craziest rural enterprise the locals had ever heard of, pecan nuts. In the entire history of this part of Australia, trees have never grown so thickly or so productively as they do today on Trawalla Station, 37 kilometres east of Moree. And nowhere else in Australia are there as many pecan trees as on Trawalla. Trawalla is now a show place. Tourist buses bring curious visitors from all over the country. And there's a steady procession of farmers through the gates to look in amazement at a project that staggers their imagination. No one calls it crazy anymore. Instead, they talk of the enterprise and determination that brought it all about. Twelve years ago, this was little more than a tract of dry scrub country, running a few sheep. Today, there are more than 70,000 pecan trees growing on the property's 750 hectares. And the nuts, now coming off the trees in millions, are about to hit the Australian market. From the air, Trawalla looks like the proverbial oasis in a parched land. While surrounding country was baked brown by drought earlier this year, the pecan plantation stood out, lush and green. The mathematical precision that dictated the layout of the plantation had its origin in the American state of New Mexico, one of the first irrigated pecan areas of the United States. The story of the success of Chihuahua is the typical story of American know-how and big thinking. The money behind it is American, and the machinery too was developed overseas. This machine is used only for cutting grass along the irrigation canals so that water flows freely. It's typical of the attention to detail that marks the entire project. All year round, the custom-made grass mowers roar up and down the rows of trees, keeping the grounds as neat and trim as a suburban lawn. This ensures maximum flow of irrigation water to the trees and reduces water loss to growing grass. The drivers travel in air-conditioned cabins. Behind the project is the Starman family, Americans who've been growing pecans in Texas and New Mexico for almost 50 years. Their American plantations produce almost 4 million kilograms of nuts a year. Total American production of pecans is now running at the rate of about 125 million kilograms a year. The nut is an all-American favorite, and now the Starmans hope to make it as popular among Australians as the peanut. All of the trees on the plantation were initially grown from nuts brought in from America. But onto half the seedlings were grafted buds from pecan trees found near Bundaberg in Queensland. They'd been brought in from America at the turn of the century and had adapted well to Australian conditions. The grafting of buds of new and improved varieties onto well-established trees is an essential and continuous feature of plantation management. Apart from the enormous investment in preparing the land for irrigation and developing the 70,000 trees, the plantation uses machinery seldom seen on Australian properties. An essential item is a big mobile hydraulic lift that enables pruning staff to reach the highest branches. Pruning helps develop a tree with a strong central trunk, carrying lateral branches properly angled to hold a heavy load of nuts and withstand high winds without breaking. 
Establishing a pecan plantation as huge as this demands endurance and a lot of money. American Dean Starman has both. He lives with his family in Toowoomba in Queensland and commutes to Tramwalla in his own twin-engined aircraft. Every morning he's on the plantation, he runs around its many kilometres of road. He says the exercise and a diet rich in pecans keeps him fit and also enables him to monitor progress in every section of the sprawling property. Dean Starman is the son of a man recognised in America as the pioneer of renewal pruning, high-density planting of pecans, and modern management practices on pecan plantations. Well, they're just as good. In general, they're a little bit larger. The Australian grow nuts he now enjoys are the result of 12 years hard work and an investment of millions of dollars. He also had to overcome massive local scepticism and come to terms with the fact that most Australians don't know what a pecan nut looks like. Indeed, they don't even pronounce its name correctly. No, over here they call them pecan nuts. Over in the States, we call them pecans. And in the States, pecans automatically includes the nuts. They don't, we don't add the nut to the end of the, of the nuts. We just say pecans. Uh, of course, it doesn't matter really whether we call them pecan nuts or pecans as long as people buy them. That's what counts. Starman had to personally train all his staff in the pioneering days at Trawalla. But there were other problems in developing the plantation he hadn't anticipated. One of them was floods. We had, we had about four or five big floods here since we got here. And I've never, I never had any floods in my life till I got in this country. Uh, one time, we had a flood down there when we had the third nursery. And the flood came along and knocked over all the trees, covered them with, with dirt. And we got about 20 men and went out there and stood them all up uh, a day after the flood went down. And uh, I went home and prayed for 30 or 40 points of rain in order to wipe, to wash the mud off. And darn if we didn't get another flood. <laughs> we had to go out about a week later and do the same thing over again. It almost broke all every back on the place. And then we had trouble with these cockatoos coming in a little bit early and trying to take the nut off the tree before it was ripe. And the crows also liked the nuts. But uh, we'd had the same trouble in the States, and we used an airplane over there to chase them off. So we bought a little Piper Cub and put the Piper Cub over here on the place and let it establish its territory. And now we don't have any bird problem. The birds know where the Piper Cub is supposed to be, and they know where they're supposed to be, and we have no more troubles. Dean Starman has behind him the financial resources and expertise of the family's American plantations. The Starmans were originally cotton farmers in the Deep South before deciding to grow pecans in the early 1930s. The changeover was initiated by a grandmotherly whim. Well, my grandmother liked pecans. We were in the cotton farming business, and she seemed to think we ought to have a, another crop. So she pushed these pecans, and finally, in about 1933-34, my daddy decided to go ahead and, and try them. And they took over from the cotton? And they took over from the cotton, they shaded it out. <clears throat> when you came to this district and bought this property, a lot of the farmers in the area thought you were mad. I probably was. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you really believe so today? No, I think, I think we've got a, a good situation here. These trees have found a home that they like. By May each year, the plantation has lost its green summer lushness, and the color tones of autumn leaves signal the approach of harvest time. The timing of the harvest was significant in the decision to establish the Australian branch of the Starman Pecan Empire. The family reasoned that by growing pecans in the southern hemisphere, they'd have fresh nuts for the American Christmas market, and all the American trees were dormant. The nuts are ready for harvest when the fibrous outer husks have dried and peeled back. The pecan belongs to the walnut family and is native to North America. The trees sometimes reach a height of 50 meters and live to a great age. It's claimed there are pecan trees in America 600 years old. The pecan has always been a popular food with the American Indians, 
and until recent times, whole tribes would migrate to areas of wild pecan trees to live for months on a basic diet of pecans. The harvesting of pecans at Trawalla means setting in motion dozens of strange-looking machines, including one that grabs each tree and gives it a good shake. The ripe nuts fall to the ground. The tree shaker is another American idea, but it requires fine judgment by the driver. Too rough a shaking could cause branches to break. Not enough shaking, and too many nuts stay on the tree. Revolving brooms behind and in front of all wheels sweep fallen nuts out of the way so they won't be damaged. It takes nine years for a pecan tree to bear fruit and half the plantation began yielding three years ago. This year was the first time all 70,000 trees had been harvested. They yielded more than a million kilograms of nuts in shell and every nut was taken from tree to factory without being touched by hand, swept up by discriminating machines that reject most of the leaves and sticks, but don't miss a nut. Two varieties of pecan are grown at Trawalla, Western Sly and Wichita, each planted in alternate rows and maturing within a few weeks of each other. This enables harvesting to be spread out. During the harvest, there's a constant procession of loaded bins to the towering processing plant. From the top of the tower, the nuts gravitate through a series of revolving sieves, which remove residue rubbish. In the processing plant, sorters pick out the broken nuts before they reach the drying shed. The broken nuts are fed to cattle in pens on a nearby property, and manure from the feedlot used for fertilizing the plantation. It will take another eight years to reach full production of about two million kilograms of nuts annually. At the moment, most of the nuts are shipped to America for shelling, but a $2 million shelling plant will be built in Australia for future crops. Because of their extraordinarily high food value, pecans were the only fresh food taken to the moon by American spacemen. And in Australia too, according to the Starmans, for the pecan, the sky's the limit.